Hello, gear nerds of the internet. This is a shit Freya. This is a gigantic capacitor. I have four of these. They're gonna go in here. And then we're gonna see if these sound better than the Wima caps inside. Science, people. Coming up. Six in the morning. So, first thing you're gonna wanna do to take the top off of this, to access this thing, is you wanna take this off. And you're gonna need a little tiny Allen wrench that I don't have. I'm gonna to have to go grab. Be right back. 2,000 years later. So what you need is a 1 16th Allen. Loosen it up, comes right off. Boom, part one, done. The next thing you wanna do is that there's a bunch of screws on the bottom of this. I've already taken most of them out. You wanna unscrew these. Now, there's screws in the corners that you wanna take out. I have also taken out most of those. Well, half of those. Then you have to unscrew this. Now, when you pull this off, it will just slide forward, at least on the Freya. The Freya Plus, I believe, might be a little bit harder. I think you have to like whack it to push it off of a little key that holds it on. I don't know. I don't have one of those. I have the regular one. So what you have to be aware of on both models is that there's these three buttons that will fall out when you slide this forward. Do not lose those. Now you have this. And you have your three buttons and your washer from your pot. Put that where it'll become easily lost, I'm sure. Now, the most annoying part, which I've already done most of, there's a billion screws in here to hold in the inputs and the outputs. Unscrew all of those. Now that that is done, this will slide out of there. If it doesn't slide out of there, if you have missed a screw of some sort, do not pull it. So, this is gonna be hard to show you. It has these three, four, has these four rather large WEMA capacitors, which I will be replacing with these even bigger Janssen Superior Z caps. Boom. I'm gonna fit those in like that. It's gonna take a little bit of finagling. Now these are way too big for the Plus. The Plus has these all kind of next to each other, whereas these are separated. So I have a little bit more room to work with. So the first thing you wanna do is you gotta get these caps out. These caps have to come out, which means you have to desolder these. So, this is potentially the scariest part because if you don't do this right, you can fully ruin your PCB, which no one wants to do that. Now you need to figure out which of these guys, and by these guys, I mean these little solder connections are the ones for your capacitors. Now we know that they're next to the tube sockets. So I'm gonna bet that it's these two and these two. And that appears to be correct. So the thing you wanna do before trying to unsolder something is to take your Get out of here, Mazzy. Take some solder, and you're gonna wanna reapply some solder to this. So 
So I think I got this one out pretty well. I just need to heat this one up a little bit and desolder it. Let's see, did I do a good enough job to get that out? It is hard to tell. All right, since the solder sucker has not been super fruitful in getting the solder out of this, we're gonna try some solder braid. So I got two of them in. I've got the other two out. This one's actually out, but I stuck it back in there to tell you the way that I found the easiest to get these things out. So what I have found is that if you heat up the pad, add a little solder, heat up the pad, pull one side out, as it heats up, go to the other side, heat that one up after you put solder on it, pull the other side out, let it cool, and go and do the other ones, and then add a little bit more solder after they've cooled down a little bit, use a solder sucker, suck out the solder, and you'll have clean joints. This is a pretty nicely made PCB, so it shouldn't, uh, so the trace, won't lift, but you want to be as diligent as possible with the way that you're desoldering and soldering. You don't want to leave the heat on any longer than you need it, and you don't want to heat it up too hot because that's when those traces lift. So I'm going to put the other two back in here, and then I think I'm going to reflow the solder to these preamp tubes just to make sure that they're good and secure because pulling these in and out do strain the solder joints on here because there is no mechanical connection other than those solder joints. I'll show you when I'm done. So the way that I've been putting these in is if you look at this, if you look at this one here, you don't have a whole lot of room because of this electrolytic capacitor. So I've been taking your, the capacitor, then bending this lead under, and then straightening it out so you have the right amount of space between these two. On these two, you have more room because that electrolytic capacitor isn't there. So you can continue to do the same thing, or you can bend them both in to have an even amount. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. We'll see in a second. So I thought this one and then this one was gonna be the hardest one, but then it turned out that this one has to contend with this little electrolytic capacitor. So I needed to move this to the left and then move it downward. And now it's kind of resting on that relay right there, um, but it should be fine. And then, when you're doing this, you just want to make sure that it's going to fit in. So, so long as you don't go much higher than these electrolytics, you should be fine. But I was able to get that in there. It's all soldered in there. One last one to go. There we go. All the new caps are in. When you're putting these in, you want to be mindful that you have enough room to put your tubes in. You also want to be mindful that you're not grounding out any of your caps on any of the resistors. And that's about it. Now you just gotta put the thing back together. Let's go through that. All right, so here we go. We're gonna slide this back in. 
making sure we get the power switch put in there properly. All right, we've got that in. We're gonna turn it around and we're gonna put one of the black screws in. And feel free to use an electric screwdriver to take these out, but I would do these all by hand, especially these, because these all go into plastic and you have a real ability to break. You don't want to over tighten these at all, at all. Um, and then just make sure that it's in properly, especially your power outlet that was on the outside a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the screws on the bottom so we have the board connected in multiple points all right so i'm going to put it down but i'm going to hold it so we're not putting any strain on those jacks on the back and we're just going to pick one of the holes and screw that in now the fun part begins people We got to put these back in. So just lay them inside. Like that. And then what you're going to want to do is kind of keep this up. And you want to get that potentiometer In. Make sure your holes are lined up on the top and you can put one of those screws back in. Make sure these are functioning before you screw everything back in. You're going to take your washer Put your washer back on the potentiometer shaft. Take your potentiometer nut, put that back on. Screw it on. I would not go too crazy screwing this on. This is what you don't want to use to tighten this, but alas, that's what I'm gonna do. Do as I say, not as I do. There you go. Make sure you have, there's a little tiny nub that goes into a hole. You wanna make sure that that's in there before you screw everything down. Now, we have everything put back together. Well, not everything. This knob has to go back on. So this knob is interesting. Normally you'll have this dot, which you can't really see. There you go, that dot will usually be on the opposite side of your set screw. But for whatever reason, that's not what this is like. If you look at the shaft of your potentiometer, you can kind of see where the set screw has bit into the into the shaft a little bit in the past. What you want to do is just line that up. And you don't want to put this all the way to the back because as you screw the potentiometer in and out, it could rub up against your chassis. You want to leave a little bit of room so you have a free floating volume knob and just kind of make sure that it's about equal, which it does not look about equal at all. Now I've overcorrected and you can really make yourself crazy with this depending on how OCD you are, but eventually you'll get it pretty right on. Now I'm going to go test this thing out and I'll be back in a minute.